welcome to our 2020 uh, Senior Day program uh, with our guest, Professor Rainer Weiss of, of MIT. Uh, so what we're trying to do here very simply is we recognize that what our students have been doing is really remarkable. Uh, it, is, it was remarkable to begin with. Uh, we have uh, started a a advanced STEM program, first with AP Physics One, then with AP Computer Science Principles, uh, through much of rural Mississippi. Uh, and we've had a fair amount of success, and that success is entirely attributable to the hard work of our students and our teachers, and we are deeply appreciative of that. Now, what we were doing to begin with was a fairly arduous task. We went ahead uh, and started this program in, in places where it did not exist before. Uh, we have increased the number of public high schools in the state of Mississippi that offer AP Physics by 50% since we started. We are now in our third year. And uh, this was something that was uh, difficult to begin with, but given these extraordinary circumstances with the coronavirus, with the school closures since March 6th. Obviously, what was a difficult task has become even more problematic. So we really deeply appreciate all the work our teachers have done and what our students have done. And we wanted to do something to recognize that. We, we know that because of the school closures, we know that uh, it, it is, is, there will not be, in addition to having problems with classes, there will not be a graduation ceremony. There will not be the, the recognition ceremonies that usually are an important component of what, what is done for our students. We're particularly mindful of our many seniors who have been unable to do this and, and will not have the, the recognition they have earned. So we, we are grateful for the opportunity to put this together. We are going ahead. We're trying to uh, uh, make this available to all our seniors. And, and we wanted to do something special to, to recognize what you have done. So Dr. Weiss kindly has agreed to speak with us. Uh, and I think as you will learn, uh, he can really add a lot of insight into a subject, the great majority of you are studying physics, but also tell you a little bit about uh, what you can look forward to uh, in, in terms of your academic careers, what is required for success, and also to, to share with you a little bit the, the excitement and, and rewards that come with hard work and sticking to things academically, and also, and perhaps most of all, to, to, to let you know, even when, as you inevitably will, as all of us do, even when you run into impediments, that you can overcome those impediments and those impediments themselves are learning experiences. So please, you know, above all else, stick to it. So with that uh, little bit of background, I wanted to turn it over to my colleague, Kieran Gia, who will give a little bit of background on our program and introduce one of our tutors uh, who has a, a special tie to our guest. And our, uh, he will then introduce uh, Dr. Weiss. So, Kieran. Thank you, Matt, um, and good morning, everyone. We're so glad that you could all join us. Um, so glad to see so many familiar faces on this call, um, and so many of our program supporters are here today. So, thank you all um, for for joining us. Um, one other thing before I tell you folks more more about our tutors and our tutoring program, and, and introduce Sam in particular. Um, as Matt mentioned, obviously this has been a very challenging time for everyone and one of the things that we have done in order to, you know, sort of take that challenge and run with it um, is that we've introduced uh, daily instructional sessions and I just wanted to take a quick moment to thank all of our teachers um, for sticking with us as well. Um, throughout this time. All of our, many of our teachers have been participating on these daily calls and two of our supervisory instructors in particular who lead the charge for us in so many ways, um, Ms. Anna Creekmore who is on and Mr. Dane Piegler, I just wanted to give a shout out to you both in particular for all of the tremendous work you've been doing day in and day out on behalf of our program and our students. You both really deserve 
a round of applause um, for all the hard work you've been doing. So thank you, thank you all very much. Um, so as Matt said, I also wanted just to take a few moments to recognize the important work of our college student tutors, um, who, as many of you know, work with our students virtually in twice weekly uh, tutoring sessions, as well as in person during our residential review programs in Mississippi throughout the year. Um, this year, our tutors have come from five different universities across the country, including MIT, Yale, the University of Virginia, Scripps, and Clemson. Um, now, during our winter program in Jackson this past January over the Martin Luther King holiday weekend, we were able to recognize the accomplishments of our tutors and our seniors in particular, who I also just wanted to take a moment to recognize by name, um, because these seniors, like Sam on the call and others who are on the call today, are faced with the same challenges that all of you high school seniors are, um, and they face the same type of losses that our high school seniors are dealing with. So we just wanted to thank them by name. Um, for their tremendous efforts this year. So first, um, we have Sam Day-Weiss, who's a senior at Yale, and he, as Matt said, has been tutoring at Lake High School uh, for three years, and I know Ms. Anderson's on, so I, I know the two of them have a special connection. Um, Brian Dolan, who's also a senior at Yale, has been tutoring with us also since the outset of our program for three years, and he's been with Holmes High School uh, for the past three years, and I know has very deep ties and deep bonds with many of his students. Um, Sean Hackett, a senior at Yale, has been tutoring this year uh, with us at Humphreys High School. Alex Lusak, also a senior at Yale, is a, a new tutor with our program and tutored in computer science this year at two schools, Scott Central and Philadelphia. Um, at UVA, we have a number of tutors who are seniors um, and one actually who graduated last year, Nick Anderson who's been with us for several years now, tutoring at Palmer and Northside High School. Megan Kenny, who's been uh, with North Pontotoc with Ms. Matthews for a couple of years now. Uh, thank you, Megan, for all of your hard work. Eric Rohr, uh, a senior at UVA, is one of our new tutors this year. Uh, he's been working with Morton High School. Yara Yosef, who I know is on the call this morning, a senior at the University of Virginia, who's been with South Pontotoc this year. And finally, we have Justin Helfgott, uh, who has been with us for a few years. He is a senior at Clemson. Um, so we just wanted to thank all nine of you folks um, for all of your efforts. Um, so I will now turn it over to Sam Day-Weiss, who will introduce um, a very familiar person to him, our guest speaker. Um, Sam, as I mentioned, has been tutoring with our program since we first started three years ago, working with Lake High School. He is a physics major at Yale, uh, an avid soccer player, and after graduation, he's planning to head to Princeton um, for a postgraduate research fellowship, uh, and then hopefully off to Chile to work on a telescope, um, and Sam can tell us more about that. So Sam, I'll turn it over to you now. Uh, thank you, everyone. Um, nice to see all of your faces this morning. Good morning. Um, and just for anyone who is wondering, the special relationship that I have with our speaker is that he is my grandfather. Um, so I'll give him a little bit of an introduction, um, a little bit of a history. So um, my grandfather, it's weird calling him by his first name, but I'll, I'll do that for the purposes, purposes of this. Um, so Ray was born in Berlin, Germany, um, from where he and his family fled the Nazi occupation, eventually immigrating to the United States in 1938 to New York City. Ray's preoccupation with electronics began here as a kid, where he attended the Columbia Grammar School and built radios and restored old sound systems for fun and for profit. Fast forward several years, Ray originally attended MIT for undergraduate electrical engineering, but switched to physics because it had the least number of requirements. All he wanted to do was get out of undergrad and continue building and selling electronics. But this would not be his only change. In his junior year, Ray actually flunked out of MIT, eventually to return knocking on the windows of laboratories to get a job. Physics had caught his attention, and after he was hired by his soon-to-be close mentor, Ray dedicated his life to the subject. He completed his master's and PhD in physics at MIT and later joined the faculty there in 1964 after completing a postdoctoral position at Princeton. As an experimental cosmologist, Ray has poured years into studying two of the most exciting areas of that field, the cosmic microwave background, otherwise known as the CMB and gravitational astronomy. In his work on the CMB, Ray ran numerous balloon experiments in the Southern United States to measure the thermal spectrum of this remnant of the Big Bang later becoming the co-founder and science advisor to the COBE satellite, which made incredibly precise measurements of this background radiation. On the front of gravitational astronomy, Ray was the co-founder of the LIGO project, 
which in 2015 announced the very first detection of gravitational waves, something first predicted theoretically by Albert Einstein 100 years prior and thought to be almost impossible to detect. Now from his home in Newton, Massachusetts, although he is a professor emeritus, Ray continues to work for LIGO every day, something I always love talking with him about, and that produces countless opportunities for learning. I discovered my own love for physics while taking this actual, this exact course, this AP Physics 1 course in my junior year of high school um, because I really loved my, my teacher. And since then, every visit to Newton, which is where my grandfather lives, has involved a long anticipated chance to talk to him about the things that I'm learning and now about the research that I've been conducting. Ironically, my, my current research, um, I work for the Symes Observatory, which is also a cosmic microwave background telescope, um, is basically on the same on the same topic that my grandfather once studied and I think that's uh, a little bit cl too close to home for his comfort he, he would probably like it if I if I branched out a little bit to a different field um, anyways um, I, I won't make this too long but the last thing I wanted to say is that I'm really happy to be here um, with all of you today as you celebrate your senior year of high school um, I know senior year was really special a special time for me um, and it was really exciting uh, because it was an enter, you know, it was it was an entrance to a new phase of life. And as a senior myself, I can understand, as Kieran was saying, employment and not being able to spend final moments in person with friends, family, and mentors before moving on um, to this new phase of life. Despite this, I hope that this day can feel special and that you can all spend a moment to reflect upon the happier moments of your time at school. Moreover, I hope that in light of this course, you can reflect fondly upon your time learning about physics. Um, and with that introduction, I'll leave the rest to Ray. First of all, Sam, let me say something to you. Uh, the field I was in is called, yeah, cosmic background radiation studies, but it's primitive, absolutely baby steps compared to what you guys are doing now. So don't, uh, I know I'm not trying to case you, don't get the wrong idea. You're doing something I was joking, I was joking. new. It's all new, okay? Now, the other thing, and the reason I want to, I, when I was asked to do this, I felt I could is because I have some connection not to, Mississippi so much, but to Louisiana. And I, before I start, I want to, in fact, what I'm going to be talking about has a lot to do with Louisiana. And if you ever get interested in the kind of research I'm going to tell you about, you can go visit this place that I'm at. It's in Livingston, Louisiana, which is about, I don't know where you all are, but I was in Oxford and it's about maybe 78 miles, 70, 80 miles from Oxford to the Southwest. And it has a, you'll see pictures of it, there's a full-fledged detector there. In fact, one of the very, very few places in the world that has one. So, and on top of that, they have something which is actually even more interesting than the detector. And that is they have an outreach center there where it's like a science museum, but it's better than that. It has in it all, a lot of the experiments that are demonstrate what you will hear a little about, namely, how you detect waves, how you listen to things, how radio and electromagnetic waves cancel each other. Those are all sorts of interesting ideas that are used in the detection of gravitational waves. They just demonstrate those in a, a, a separate facility that's right next to the, uh, next to the, lab, uh, next to the, the detector itself. And on top of that, and this is more for the teachers, you know, the way this works is that uh, this is all over Louisiana because Louisiana helped pay for it, but I'm sure that Mississippi can get in there too, is that the teachers come with their students. And while the students are actually learning all this stuff from these experiments that are in that place, the teachers are learning how to make some of these experiments primitive, in a primitive variety so they can take them home to their own schools. And so it's a, it's a very good place. I think it's made a big change in the way people teach physics and all sorts of sciences in Louisiana. And I highly recommend it to you. So that's how I'll start. And that's why I'm very happy to talk about that. But let me now do, I may lose you all by, because I'm not super, you know, technically competent with this new program yet, but let's see if I can do what I'm supposed to. So, and Sam, don't go away, okay? Uh, so I share screen and then I hit, the thing I want to display, and there it is. I hope you can see that slide. Can you? You can see it. We yeah, can. That, that, good. It's not going to be very long. I want to give you a very brief overview of what it is that, that is going on in Livingston and also in other places, as you'll see in a minute. 
But the basis of it all is uh, that what we all teach, and I suspect many of you have learned, is there's Isaac Newton, and he was the grand man of gravity because he helped understand, help us understand how gravity works. The th gravity, after all, is that force that's holding it down to the earth. You, you, you sometimes you curse at it because you drop something that breaks, but most of the time you're very happy about it because you don't go flying off the earth. So it turns out this equation, which I, let's see if I can get, if you can see this, yeah, I can see the pointer, maybe you can also. But this equation may be an equation that you have encountered once in your life before. It says that the force of gravity between two objects, which has a mass and another mass, these are two people, let's say you and your buddy, uh, and there's a constant, which is not terribly important, but the force of gravity depends on the mass of you and your buddy, and is, gets smaller and smaller with the square of the distance. You can hardly feel that force. I mean, I, if you want to demonstrate that force, you have to build a little very delicate apparatus to show it. But with the mass as big as the Earth in here, and the mass as of you, the force is your weight. It's how much you weigh. So this is the theory of gravity that actually explains a lot of stuff. It explains how you fall to the ground. It also explains how we move around the sun. It explains almost all the work that has been done by the space program. Not all of it, but most of it. In other words, that you can launch satellites and they go around the earth and they do interesting stuff. And lastly, they also explain something very complicated, but which is easy to understand once you get into the theory a little bit, how the tides in the ocean work. And that's something that made this a very big success for Newton. He was a guy who sort of pulled all of this together and everybody thought he was wonderful and he was. And that's why we teach Newtonian gravity. Now, as he's been replaced, however, and let's see if I can make this work. And this may not work so well, hold on. There, oh my, hold on, let me go back. Good, he's been, he was replaced by Einstein. Einstein, there's a picture of Einstein as a very old man. He came up with this theory while he was a lot younger, and I should have used the picture of him that made him a little, look, a little younger. But he replaced the Einstein, he replaced the Newton equation with this very cryptic equation here, which I only explained to you. You can hardly solve this equation, even though it looks very simple. It's a stinker. And what it says, though, is something very profound, and I'll show you a picture of how it works. It says that the geometry, this is what's over here, geometry on this side, the geometry of space and how you keep time, both things are de determined by how the matter and the energy is distributed in the space and in time. So there's a relationship that Einstein came up with that the space we live in gets distorted by the mass and the things that they keep the time. And I wanna show you an example of what, this is a reinterpretation of, of, of gravity. And uh, here's one way to think about it. So it's a picture that will help a little. I don't know how many of you have ever walked, in, walked into a jungle gym. You know, kids in New York have jungle gyms. Maybe there are jungle gyms in Mississippi. I'm sure there are. But jungle gyms are, you know, a set of bars, all bars in all three dimensions. And what we're thinking of here is a new bar. You climb in them. And uh, it's in many playgrounds. And so what I've done here is it's a picture of taking a cut through the jungle gym. Just make a cut through the jungle gym. It's one plane through the jungle gym. And you can see something interesting here. What this is, is the make-believe sun. And what the sun does is it causes great distortions in the jungle gym's spacing and shape. You notice what it does? It causes a distortion in that space. And out here where the sun is far away, it looks pretty flat. Everything is the way it was, it was as it was in the jungle gym. Furthermore, if you put clocks everywhere out here, put time, you know, with clocks you wear on your wrist, they all keep the same time out here. Everywhere out in the place where everything is very flat and straight. In here, the clocks do funny stuff. For example, the clock goes slower where this thing gets dipped a lot, it distorted a lot. And out here, they go a little faster. And that's something people had never had expected to but the time gets changed as well. And you can see a little dimple from the earth. There's the earth. And it makes a little, it's not as strong as the sun, it makes a little dimple in that space. Now this is a completely different way of thinking about gravity. What it is, is it says these distortions that are in space that are made by these objects tell the earth how to move around the sun. 
And there's a, I'm not gonna describe how that's done in the theory, but you can imagine with a space that's distorted like that, it's gonna make it look like a, a shortest path around the sun is around a path that has somehow distortion, distortions in it. So the important thing this theory describes and as is relevant to what I wanna tell you about is actually the thing that's being measured in Louisiana, Louisiana is this. These are gravitational waves and I'll show you one. Uh, these didn't exist before, Einstein's theory. And what they are, are waves that are just much like waves in a pond. And you suppose you drop a rock into a pond and you always can see waves fully leaving the pond and going off away from the way the rock dropped in. It turns out gravity has that kind of waves too. And they occur because of wherever there might be motions of objects like the sun and the earth going around each other, that makes gravitational waves. If you're just sitting still and doing nothing, you won't get any gravitational waves. It has to be motion. And it has to be very special kinds of motion. It can't be spherically symmetric. It has to be somehow not completely spherically symmetric. And uh, let's not worry about that, what that means. It's just you can't, for example, a balloon that expands and contracts will not make gravitational waves. Where, as I said, two objects going around each other in a plane will make gravitational waves. Now these waves, Tra travel or were alleged to travel at the speed of light, just the way light travels, just as fast as light. And their waves, much like the wave that you generate when you drop that stone into the pond, they're called transverse waves. And that means they do their dirty work, the things they exude, exert, they, they do their stuff. And we'll see what that is in a minute, but they do their thing perpendicular to the direction in which the wave is moving. So right, that set of dots that you see in front of you here, I'm going to try to start that moving right now, and you'll see what a gravitational wave does to space. You're, by the way, so you can identify what's going on. If you can see this, where my arrow is right now, there's a little red square. That's you. And with all these dots in space, because you can think of them as little masses that have been thrown around, the, pa the pattern that they will take is the one you're seeing right now. And that pattern is very specific. You'll see that it stretches space in one dimension while it contracts space in the other and they keep flipping back and forth. I hope you see that. It's expansion in one dimension and contraction in the other and then the next time it's the other way around. The one that was contracted gets expanded and the one that was expanded gets contracted. So now there's one other attribute of that picture you ought to look at. And that is that people around you, right around the red spot, they don't do much. This guy and that guy, they don't do much. But the guys who are very far away from you, like that guy way over there and that guy way over here, they move a lot. And that's a, play, that's a picture that you can get with a rubber band. If you want to do this yourself, take a rubber band and put little marks on it, like the little dots, and stretch it. And you will get a picture that looks just like that. So what a gravitational wave does is it stretches space and contracts it. <coughs> And that's how we measure them. And, uh, anybody got a question about that right now? Because that's the time to have the question. I think just, just so you know, uh, Ray, the, the way we have set this up and certainly, you know, whenever you want to break for questions is fine. Yeah. What, what we have, uh, what we are planning to do is to have just the Q and A once, once you are okay, done. Okay. Let's go on. I want to ask, but I, can you see it? Was the picture clear enough, Matt? Yeah. And could you yeah. see the little red square? Yes, absolutely. Good. That's right, all I right, right in the okay. middle and the other dots are sort of fluctuating. That's right. Okay. So now let me show you how to detect one of these things. And this is what's going on in Livingston. And the way you detect them is here's a laser. That doesn't look like a laser, but this becomes a laser in a minute. And it will send out some light to something called a beam splitter. And what that does so it takes the light and half of it gets reflected. It'll go up to that mirror right there. And the other half that's coming out of the laser will go through it and go to the mirror over here, which is obstructed by the pictures, but that's all right. So now, uh, and then here's a detector. And let me turn this thing on and you'll see an interesting thing. Well, a gravitational wave is gonna come down on top of this. It's coming from above and it'll stretch space in one dimension and contract space in the other, but watch what it does to the light. So wherever there's red, there's light. 
But that wiggly thing is the oscillation inside the light. It's called the electric field in the light. And watch what it does as it hits these things. And now it's about to go to the detector. And you'll see there's no light going to the detector. Why? Because the waves are canceling each other. In other words, there's no red to the detector and there's no red on the detector. Now comes the gravitational wave and stretches one arm and expands the other. And lo and behold, there is light going to the detector. And that's the whole idea behind this experiment that's in Livingston. You take light, send it to two mirrors a very distant part, distance very long apart. You want a very big distance. Okay. You want, it, you want it at a very big distance, as we'll see in a minute, because the motion is much larger for the far distance than very close. So this is a picture of all the different of these detectors we're going to talk about in a second. And uh, there, there's the one in Livingston. Whoops. There's the one in Livingston right near you. And there's another one up in the, in the Pacific Northwest. That's in Washington State. And then there are others. There's one in Italy. And uh, there's a small one in Germany. And two are being bought. Well, one, this is just about starting to run. And there's one being planned in India. But right now, the two that have most, done most of the work are these two. OK? And now, let me show you what his just pictures of what the place looks like. This is looking down. This is a movie. But this is a picture of the one in Livingston. You can see trees. And uh, you can see the two arms. And there it is, the same thing in, in, in Washington State. And you can see the, the big concrete tube that holds a vacuum system. Here it is in Louisiana. And the light laser beams go through this tube and back and forth. And here is a table that you might be able to work on yourself, which holds optical equipment. And, and there is the control room in the Livingston site. And you'll see people, including undergraduates from universities, sitting here learning how to run the apparatus. And so it's, uh, and the reason why I want to show you this is not just something that a bunch of crazy academics do. It's something that a lot of people have come and joined in. And I want to tell you a little about the students and the people who are working there. But what we detected and that made it so important to tell you about this is this. And uh, what is this picture? And I won't say very much more except what it is. Uh, uh, this, this is what we detected back in the year 2015, back in September. And the picture on the left this is a wiggling of the mirrors. And you'll notice that this is the one in Livingston. And this is the one at, Wanf at Hanford in Washington. And this is junk. This is just noise. And this is just noise. But a little something begins to show up here after a while. And then it's really quite big in Livingston. And the same thing happens. Exactly the same thing happens in, in Washington state. It turns out, however, these signals, when you look at them carefully, they came first to Livingston. And a little bit later, something like tens of milliseconds, no, threes of milliseconds later, they showed up in Hanford. And what that said to us all, ah, whatever was the source of this came from the south. It didn't go the other way. It went from the south toward the north. And what was it? Well, it turns out these are gravitational waves from two black holes. And I, this is the last thing I'll show you. Uh, the two black holes, first of all, these are objects that Einstein had predicted, but at the same time, when he started thinking about them, he rejected them. And this has been a story for many, many years. People believed in them, and they didn't believe in them, and they believed in them, and they didn't believe in them. Lots of theoretical work until finally, some people in the X-ray astronomy business, people saw, didn't see them directly, but saw, saw them in star systems. And then we actually detected them. And here's what, let me start this, and you'll see what happens. Here's a pair of black holes. And there you'll, what's here is the, you'll see the distortion of space and time in this. And the wave front is down below here, if you look. Now, the two black holes, you can see are the two things on top. And these holes that are made in the space are like, just like the dimples the sun made in the space when you looked at it in the first time. But these are much more severe. And the colors tell you what the time is doing. Where it's red, it, there's a, time has slowed down like mad. And when it gets to black, this time has stopped entirely. And the little stretch, little arrows show you the direction of those motions, the stresses. So now, the, now it's, you know, this is now, they're getting closer and closer. And now you can look in. I mean, this thing is slowed down. And you know, look at the black spot right in there. Time has stopped in there. Again, there. And now the two black holes have merged and made a new black hole. And now the new black hole, everything calms down a little bit. 
And those waves, which you can see like if there were pebbles, this thing dropping like into the pond, are the gravitational waves that left it. So that's what we saw. And that was really quite dramatic. I never had seen a thing like that before. And everybody got very excited and very worried. And I'll tell you a little about that in a minute. That's, that's, that's the end of my presentation. Uh, when we saw this, most people said, wow, but you weren't sure it was real. It could have been a million different things. And it took us something like six months before we were sufficiently satisfied that this was really what, we, what I just showed you. And, there, and then, since then, we've seen 10, oh my God, we've seen something like 50 more of these things. So that's in the last four years, last three years. So what you noticed in that little snippet where I showed you the people in the Livingston uh, control room, two of those people were people who were doing what's called uh, surf projects, student undergraduate research projects. They come from all over the country in the United States, occasionally from Europe, but mostly from the United States because it's an NSF supported um, getting undergraduates who are in universities into big time research so they can be part of it for a while. And when you go to college, and if you're interested in this, and this is not just gravitational waves, almost every branch of physics has members who come to it during the summers, and you can work with somebody in their research. And then you go back to school in the, in the, in, in the winter. So that's one of the reasons I want to show you this. And uh, the other thing I want to tell you, just because that's why I know that, I mean, my, what, what Sam said is right. I flunked out. But that didn't kill it. And the reason is because I had a hobby as a kid, as he told you, I was doing electronics and as a kid. And it turns out that as an experimenter, if you become a physics experimenter, it's not just the courses that you have taken in high school or in grades in, in, in college that matter. It turns out all the little skills that you picked up in your life. Like for example, if you worked in a garage, and we're involved with pumping gas or fixing tires or fixing engines or working with somebody or working with a plumber or working with an electrician or, you know, or, or actually being a computer programmer at the very limited scale that you already do probably in high school. All of those things are skills that are useful for you as you go forward because that's what got me into science. I, after flunking out, I became a technician. That's one thing. I just want to tell you that if you're, not good at, if you're not good at grades and you're not good at being a good student because you don't quite do it right, don't give up. It turns out a lot of the stuff you've learned, especially that are just the day-to-day -day things you've learned that are technical and have given you the technique to learn how to troubleshoot things, are things that are extremely valuable. Okay. Now, the other thing that came out of my story, and I hope happens to you also, is that... Uh, Okay, so I got into trouble. And, but then I got into this lab and I ran into this guy, a guy named Gerald Zacharias, who became both, my, he was my boss for a while, but more importantly, he became my mentor. And I began to realize what people who do physics were like. I mean, what they did, how they behaved, how they thought about things. And the fact is that he accepted me as a, not an equal, but he certainly accepted me as somebody that's worth talking to was very important to me. And it actually was very, and, and the reason for it was that I could see as and it was very much like the medieval system. I think it's the medieval ages had some good things about them. One of them is in order for you to make progress, you had to apprentice yourself to somebody else. And that's the way I looked at that experience. So one of the things I really urge you to do when you go to college now is to, once you get there and MIT has that, but every other university and co college does this also now, look around and see who is looking for help in what they're working on. And then don't take only courses, but also go work with somebody. And that starts in the freshman year if you want. You have, if you have a skill, that's, I mean, especially nowadays, it's learning how to do a little bit of computing. People want to have data analyzed. That's one thing. I don't want, I don't want to tell you how you get in, but you, so you bring things to it. And so consequently, you, uh, you're not only somebody who's learning, but you're, you're offering some help. And I want you desperately to think about that because it's a much better experience than only taking courses. And it gets you into talking with people who are actually doing this stuff. And you may decide you really love it or you may decide, oh no, it's terrible, I don't wanna do this. But that's where you really find out. 
you don't find that out from courses. So thank you. Thank you very much, Ray. That, that was terrific. Uh, just so you guys know, we are going to try and get uh, out to you uh, Professor Weiss's comments. Uh, it, and we really are trying. We had hoped to do it actually this year, but obviously circumstances got a little uh, out, of, out of our control with, with the school closures. But we very much do hope to get down to Louisiana to, to visit the LIGO facility. Uh, some of you, uh, uh, at least some of our teachers, because we did this our first year, we did hear from Professor Cavaglia, who was then with the University of Mississippi, about the work that's being done there. It's, it's remarkable stuff, and we very much hope uh, to get down there soon. So what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to turn this over to Mrs. Creekmore. As uh, Kieran mentioned at the outset, uh, Dane Piegler and Anna Creekmore really have been leaders for us throughout this effort and have really uh, uh, been, are in many ways, the, the, the people leading the effort in teaching the, uh, the computer, or I'm sorry, the, teaching the AP Physics 1. So what I've asked Anna to do is to basically moderate, as she does each day, for those of you who are just joining us today, Every single day we have a physics uh, lesson. Every single day we teach either, uh, have Mr. Piegler teach, Mrs. Creekmore. Mrs. Creekmore usually manages the, the, the chat box and the uh, questions. We've had tutors teach as well, Sam, Brian, and others. Uh, so uh, what we're gonna do, because we have quite a few people, uh, we have asked, uh, we ask that you please type into the chat box questions, and then Anna will uh, relay them to uh, Professor Weiss. So uh, Anna, I turn it over to you. Our first question is from um, Ms. Sharon Schaefer. She's a teacher at South Talk, and she asks, does a gravitational wet wave affect the time on Earth? Yes, very, very little. Let me explain it. Actually, it's just the, the gravity of Earth, by the way, affects the time on Earth already. And let me do, it's the gravity wave is even a smaller effect. But let me say it's something about gravity, Earth's gravity <coughs> does that already. And I, I, you have a very important testimonial to that. I don't know how many of you have a GPS on cell phones. I mean, that's become something a lot of people have. That GPS thing, which tells you how to drive and how to get to your house from wherever you are, that requires that, that you take into account the fact that clocks that are at the satellites that are way up in the sky go at a slower, go at a faster rate than the ones on the ground. So in order that the time gets changed by gravity is something you witness every day, but it's tiny, very, very tiny effect. Now the gravitational waves are even tinier, but yes, I, they do affect the way time is kept. Our next question is from Emily Pettit. She is a student at Houston High School. She asked if you could meet any person in history for a day, who would you want to meet? Well, that's a hard question. <laughs> that's a very hard question. I think I'd like to meet Einstein. Um, I'm still waiting on a few other questions, so. I, I, I'd be interested to, to ask uh, Ray, why, why Einstein? What, if you saw Einstein, what would you like to ask him? Well, I have an indirect Einstein story, which it's too long to tell, but uh, I, would, I, I would like to ask him the following. Here he comes up with this really quite remarkable theory. He's not an experimenter. He's a person who does theory. And he did it all in his head. Now, to me, that's an absolute miracle. How can you come up with something that turns out in the end to be true in so many different places? For, I mean, it's just, was he lucky? No, I think he had an instinct about nature which is really, I'd love to understand what it was. Because at the time when he came up with this, he, a lot of people thought it was completely nutty, by the way. I mean, that happened, and nobody expected that this theory would be anything but uh, put into the waste paper basket. But it turns out one thing after the other that he predicted, gravitational waves is only one of them, black holes, the fact that time is affected by gravity, the fact that light gets bent by the sun, a whole bunch of things. Uh, all of these things turned out to be true. And so it turns out just by sitting there thinking about it, he came up with something that nature really has in it. And to me, that's a miracle. 
Our next question comes from Abby Kate Boyer, and she's a, also a student at Houston High School. She said, how do you stay humble after winning a Nobel Prize? Oh, gosh. You know, let me say something about the Nobel Prize. Yeah. And now you know a little more than most people do about that. You looked at that facility. I didn't build that. Okay, there were, by the time you got done, there were about a thousand people that were involved in making LIGO go. Oh, thousands a little exaggerate, that came later, but certainly there were about 100 people who made LIGO work. And I would think that at least half of them, if not more than half, could have been me, could have been, could have been a Nobel Prize winner. So it's a bit of a, I would say, a piece of luck or accident. Okay, I, don't, I feel funny about it. I the way I feel about it is I represent them. That's the best I can tell you. Kathleen Clark asks, what is your favorite physics equation? Oh my. <laughs> I like Maxwell's equations, but that's, that's just because I think it does so much more than anything else. But <laughs> what is yours? Newton's second law of motion is the best one. <laughs> you like that? Okay. <laughs> Um, another question that we have is, um, did you ever think while you were working that you had gone into the wrong field? Well, that's a good question. Um, I didn't actually, as, as, as Sam described to you, I got into physics because I was lazy and it didn't have as much many requirements. So I wasn't interested in physics so much. I had some things I wanted to do and I didn't want to be disturbed by the educational system. I mean, that sounds like a heresy, but it was a way of getting some time to think for myself. And what really got me into physics wasn't so me planning that. It was like, as I said, I could do electronics and I, when I got flunked out, I went and worked with a guy who did physics. And I watched what he did and it was absolutely wonderful. And that's what got me into physics. It was, it was the mentorship of the guy I worked for. So I didn't plan it, it just happened. Jamie Randall from Northeast High School um, has asked, could you give advice to someone who wishes to major in physics? I think the best thing to do is start monkeying around with and tinkering with things that, and show yourself a lot of the things that are, you know, that go on in, in nature. I mean, not everybody can do everything. You can't build a particle accelerator. You can't build a gravitational wave antenna, but you can certainly look at a pendulum and watch what it does, or you can smash, boxes together and see what, you know, or you can make, you can show that Newton's equations work. Things that make it real is what you want to do. In other words, don't just look at equations on a table. Don't look at just paper, but go out and observe and do things yourself and see. And the way you get, the nicest way to do that is to actually work with other people. Stacy Johnson, also from Northeast High School asked, what is your best advice to an apprehensive high school senior who is going to college? That's a hard one. And I hate to tell you, I keep coming back. I sound like an old phonograph record. But the more you have experienced, for example, as a high school, very often, like in Sam's experience, he had a very excellent high school teacher who, who was in physics and showed him all sorts of stuff. That's not always what you have because sometimes the teachers in high school are so busy with so many other things, they don't have the time to do that. It takes a fancy school sometimes to be able to have the luxury of doing that. So what I would argue is that if you can, and you maybe can be in towns where what I'm about to say is not possible, but if you're in a moderately sized town, is to go and sniff around and find out, for example, uh, to go and work with somebody who is doing engineering or just, Go, go apprentice yourself to somebody say, I like, I like to find out, or even work with an electrician or work with a plumber. Be the guy who hands him the tools. I don't care. Or the girl who hands him the tools. It's anything that gets you so that you can see what the people who are doing things with their hands and their heads together are doing. And I think that's the way you get around it. For example, I was not good at math. I've never been very good at, uh, I mean, I have to stand, understand math by drawing pictures. And uh, so, you know, just looking at an equation does, usually doesn't mean anything to me until I draw a picture. And that's a lot of apprehension associated with that. I know that because I have, I've been in this teaching business for years. And as soon as I tell people, look, here's this equation. They don't, oh, they don't understand it. I don't understand. Oh my God, I'll never be a physicist. And you go to the blackboard and you say, let's put some numbers into it. 
and let's see what this looks like on a graph. And all of a sudden, things could change completely. You can see what's going on, and you don't worry about that. Oh, the equation doesn't quite make sense to you. But that picture makes a hell of a lot of sense to you. And those are the kind, these are all the different little tricks. Work with people who are in the business, not necessarily physics, but doing things that are technical, and try to understand the things that you're learning by drawing pictures about them. Um, our next question is from Eric Rohr. He's a, one of our tutors from EVA. He said, what do you think the next big experimental result in fundamental physics or cosmology will be? Oh, that's a wonderful question. That's a hard question, but look, <clears throat> I, I mean, I, you have my prejudice in this. I think that finding out what dark matter is, that's the thing that seems to be all over the universe. And we don't have the first idea what it really is. We see its effect. We see this, this dark matter attracting other matter by either Einstein or Newton. It doesn't matter who you use, whose equations you use. And what that is, which is, since it's about, you know, more than about, certainly more than about 90% or around 90% of all, no, it's not, that's baloney. It's more like 30% of all the matter in the universe. Uh, uh, we don't, and we don't know what it is. That's gonna be a big discovery. The other big discovery will be the other half of the thing you don't know about the universe. Let me what is called the dark energy. Not something most people don't know about, but it's something that's once you get to look at the universe very hard, you'll find out it's everything is attracting everything else. But if you look way, way into the early history of the universe, you'll find out that everything is blowing apart. And so gravity has both an attractive term, which pulls things together, but also, we don't see it so often, a part that pushes everything apart. And understanding that would be wonderful. Now, let me preface that by saying, this is one of these wonderful examples of Einstein again. Einstein invented something that made gravity look like it pushed things apart. It was called the cosmological constant. And uh, then he said, oh, after he discovered that the universe was expanding, which back in about 1935, in the, in the late 20s, uh, he decided, oh, that was the biggest mistake he'd ever made, to put that cosmological constant into those beautiful equations he'd invented in 1915. It turns out that cosmological constant, which pushes things apart, he invented that because he wanted to make the universe look like when you look up at the sky at night. You don't see everything moving. You see a planet moving, but you don't see everything blowing up and... Well, that's just because we didn't look hard enough. You don't look with other wavelengths. You only look with your eyes. But things are going apart like crazy still, flying apart. And it turns out they're flying apart faster than they were in the beginning. So it turns out that there is something pushing gravity. It's not all of gravity, but there's something pushing it apart. And that's called the dark energy. And I'd love to know what that is. It happens to work with Einstein's cosmological constant. Why? Nobody understands. So those are two things in cosmology that are interesting. I think the other thing in physics that's interesting, I mean, is, is really understand, this is much more complicated, and I don't think anywhere near as fundamental, is trying to really understand how many bodies, that's many, many different things, handle each other. How they, when you have one molecule and another molecule, you can do it. You can do the mathematics. If you have 10,000 molecules and 10,000 more molecules, they're all interacting. That turns out to be extremely difficult. Now, it may just be difficult because it's complex. I'm not sure it isn't only for that reason. There may be some new things in what's called many body physics. It's very much more complicated and not as fundamental as the cosmology. Um, another question that we had that um, kind of encompasses a couple of different people. How do you approach challenges um, and what are your thought processes whenever you face something that's very difficult? Well, I happen to enjoy it. You know, it's a problem. Wow. Something to, something to fix, something to solve. Um, I can't tell you. I mean, that's just, you know, everybody, some people like to do crossword puzzles. Other people like to strategize a football game. Uh, it's all the same kind of thinking. I just happen to enjoy that. As a professor, what have you seen students do in, on their own that have contributed to their success in college? And um, what are some things that you look for in undergraduate students that set them apart? Well, I try very little to set people apart. I, I take everybody who comes along and I find something good in them usually. So I, I'm not the guy, I'm not the person who will, I don't like to do that. I don't like to say, hey, you're better than the other guy. Because in the end, it turns out, in most cases, it's not true. And you'll find this over and over again. 
for example, I'm sure in your school, there are people who do very, very well on the exams and you can't get near them. Now you give them a real puzzle to think about how you build a, a model airplane or how you make something work and they can't even begin to think about how to do it. So it turns out there is different sets of skills associated with different things. And unfortunately, and this is the reason why I think going to college is sometimes harmful. I don't mean that you shouldn't do it, but you have to be careful. Don't get intimidated by these purple people who know how to operate the system, who know how to answer all the questions, or who know how to do the homework faster, or who know how to do the exams better. That doesn't mean they're better than you, okay? We're gonna take two more questions. Um, you talked about, this is from Olivia. She's one of our tutors. She asked, you talk about how other life skills, such as electronics, can help in the realm of physics. Well, what has studying physics taught you about other areas of life? Well, no, physics is sort of fundamental to everything. It's just that, it's not that electronics is something that makes you understand physics or, or makes it, what it does is it enables physics. It enables you to look into nature and see, for example, much of what we have now you couldn't do without electronics. All the computing that you're doing is all electronics. It's not, it, it enables things. And, and all the technology we develop, better, you know, making better mirrors, making better surfaces, making uh, better gears, making stronger materials, all of that, which is technology, enables you to do more things in physics. So some other people enables them to do their research. In biology, I think it's one of the most important places where technology has completely revolutionized biology, technology of trying to understand the DNA molecule. That's technology. So it turns out that you want to break it up. Don't, don't think of it as electronics got to in, in, into physics. It's a matter of you have to have a skill. That skill is useful in enabling the science and the new information that you might get. And sometimes people just love the technology. I happen to enjoy building circuits. I love it when they start working. It's things like that. So you get a lot of pleasure out of doing something. I can't imagine a machinist in a machine shop not enjoying a, a, a when he gets done or she gets done with some piece that they're working on and admiring the thing. Or a guy who, or a girl who's doing uh, you know, woodwork or anything like that, all of that has a lot of pleasure in it and a lot of satisfaction. Um, our last question is, you had mentioned in one of your videos that every day is an interesting day. And um, you had said that as a follow-up question about how do you go into every day, um, maybe sometimes doing the same thing. Could you expound on that a little bit? Never the same thing. That's the point. <laughs> I mean, every day there's some new problem that comes along. And sometimes there are problems that you've only, I tell you, I mean, a standard thing <clears throat> which makes scientists very, very happy is the following. I'll give you the, the sort of aha moment that everybody always talks about. And that is, you've been working on a problem. Let's say you've been working on trying to figure out why uh, a particular thing in your lab doesn't work. And you've tried everything you can think of. And one day you go out for a walk or you go out and have some ice cream or something like that. And on the way back, it suddenly occurs to you, my God, I didn't try that thing. And then it, it turns out to be that new thing is the thing that was the problem. That gives most people an enormous pleasure. Now that's true whether they're doing experiment or they're doing theory. Theorists, for example, can sit there for hours and hours looking at equations, trying to solve them, trying to draw pictures of them, and then all of a sudden they find out, for example, oh my God, if they change the way the coordinates are related, in other words, they go from Cartesian coordinates to spherical polar coordinates, the thing falls apart on them. And that's a thing that makes most people go through the roof if they're doing theory. So it turns out these are the moments, these are the moments of enormous pleasure that are associated with, with working hard on something getting stuck, and then all of a sudden an answer comes to you, and then you get a big kick out of it. Well, with, with that, uh, we want to be very respectful of Ray's time. Uh, Ray, you've been terrific. Thank you for speaking with our students. Uh, a pleasure. Thank you. Speaking of tinkering with things, we, we did have a little bit of an issue at the outset in terms of... You got your 145, didn't you? Yes, we, we, we hit our capacity. We, we had actually, under our normal plan, we limit this to 100. We quickly hit that. Uh, we had, I thought, but this is a, a, a matter of, uh, as you say, tinkering with things. 
I had thought I had prepared for that contingency, but apparently I perhaps did not do something quite right, but uh, I did what many people do in, in such situations. People, is I asked my son, fix this. I don't know quite what we need to do, and he was quickly able to do so. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, what we're gonna do now, and certainly uh, Professor Weiss, uh, uh, we're deeply grateful. You're welcome to stick around for the next phase of our program where we recognize our seniors. We also uh, certainly know that you have other demands on your time, so we- Well, I'm, I'm gonna leave you, I'll tell you why. You asked about how the spring is doing here. It's nice yeah. outside and I'd like to go outside. Well, that is, uh, <laughs> that is a very wise thing to do. Uh, and what we're gonna do now is, is turn to our seniors who are the honorees today, but with that, uh, uh, Professor Weiss, thank you, that was terrific. We greatly appreciate your time. We greatly appreciate uh, uh, your role in, in bringing Sam to us as a tutor. Uh, he's been a great resource for us for over the years, but uh, again, uh, thank you very much, and we do hope very much to take up, you, take up your offer to go down to Livingston and, and uh, see what is being done at the LIGO facility firsthand. So thank you again. So what we're gonna do now is we turn to the second part of our program, which is really uh, the, the reason we are doing this. So again, we are looking to honor our students, we're looking to honor our teachers, uh, and, and most of all, to, to honor our seniors, because our seniors, this is their last year of high school, they've put in very hard work, they've done a great job, they've done things that, that students simply have not done before. Uh, at their schools, these, these schools had not previously offered AP Physics. Uh, one thing about AP Physics 1, and this is sort of an unhappy fact, but I think it is worth noting in, in identifying why these seniors demand or, de or deserve, I should say, commendation. There's about, eight, there's about 40 AP tests. The pass rate for AP Physics 1 is the lowest of all 40 or so AP tests. It is the hardest test you can take. Uh, that's what the data suggests. But these students have taken on a challenge. They were working hard in the face of a lot of obstacles, even before schools closed. Now with schools closed, to keep this up really requires extraordinary effort. And we wanted to make sure we, we honored them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go around to each of our schools. We, we have 15, schools, uh, we have 20 classes, uh, both AP Physics 1 and AP Computer Science principals. I certainly don't wanna ignore our computer science students. And we're gonna to recognize someone from each school to present their students and their seniors. Uh, we ask that for their seniors, they identify to the extent they've figured this out yet, what their, their plans may be for the fall. I think many of us uh, are having a hard time to figure out what the plans are for the fall. But uh, we're gonna go through the schools alphabetically uh, and we will start with Aberdeen, which is in East Central Mississippi. Uh, and uh, we are grateful for the work there of uh, uh, Superintendent Clay, who uh, we've worked with. Aberdeen has been part of our program for the last three years. Uh, Principal Bullard, who has uh, started this year, we're grateful for her help. Uh, and we want to turn it over to uh, Ms. Hazel. If, if you're on, Ms. Hazel, if you could just uh, identify your, your students, please. Good morning. We have about um, nine students who were involved in our AP Physics course. Shamar Blanchard, Kirsten Nancy, Kamaya Howard, Miracle Murray, Isaac Watson, Jillia Chandler, Alonzo Shaw, Kamaya Blanchard, Taylor Adair. And um, from my understanding right now, we have one who will be joining the military. We have a couple who will be attending Mississippi State University, Ole Miss University, and um, Itawama Community College. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Hazel. Uh, our next school is uh, Clarkdale which is a school in uh, Lauderdale County, which is a, uh, fairly close to the Alabama border, uh, sort of south central 
uh, right along I-20 uh, in, in East Central Mississippi. Uh, we have been working there the last two years, uh, and uh, we have uh, been working there with uh, uh, Mrs. Ivy is the, the, the class teacher, uh, 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 Dr. Kane is the superintendent, and uh, uh, Ms. Reed, uh, Ms. White, uh, and others were grateful for all they have done. Uh, the, the tutor, and I do want to acknowledge our tutors, our tutor, by the way, at uh, Aberdeen is uh, Savannah Chapman. The tutor at Clarkdale, who has been there the last two years, is actually uh, from MIT also, just like uh, Professor Weiss. Uh, Katie Clark, who has been part of our program actually since 2016, even before we started in Mississippi, she helped us with some of our initial uh, uh, production of some of the materials and video we put together. So Mrs. Ivy, uh, if I could turn it over to you, please, and if you could identify your students. Good morning. I have seven graduating seniors, Rayleigh Bowles, will attend Meridian Community College, and then on to Mississippi State University for biomedical engineering. Jody Crane will attend MSU, Mississippi State Community uh, uh, University in political science. Emily Gant, will attend Mississippi College for biology pre-med. Neely Gilmore will attend the University of Mississippi with an undergraduate in biology and then on to optometry school. Jacob Farmer will attend Mississippi State University for biomedical engineering. Mary Margaret Freeman will attend Mississippi College for English literature. Peyton Rigdon, will attend Mississippi State University for biology. Congratulations to my seniors. Okay. Thank you very much, Mrs. Ivey. We appreciate that. Uh, now we're gonna train, turn to uh, Kahoma Early College High School. Uh, Ms. Tutson, I'm not sure if Ms. Tutson uh, was able to join us. Uh, Kahoma, uh, uh, Early College High School uh, also is one of our original schools. We have been working there for three years. Uh, it so happens that uh, all of their students are juniors. So although they are not uh, technically uh, among the honorees on, on Senior Day, we certainly want to acknowledge the hard work that they have been doing. Uh, Kahoma is in Clarksdale in the Delta in Northwest Mississippi. Uh, Ms. Tutson, are, are you, I, I don't know if you are on the line. Uh, so if, if uh, in the absence of Ms. Tutson, I do want to acknowledge a few other folks there. Uh, Dr. Towner, the superintendent, uh, Ms. Jamison, the principal, and Barbara Lucas, who has been very helpful to us since the inception of the program. Uh, Ms. Lucas, I, I think I may have seen you on, are, are you on? Well, she may be muted, but let me just go very quickly through, through th th those students. They are juniors, but I still wanted to acknowledge them. They've been a key part of our program. Kaylin Brooks. Yes. Okay, Ms. Lucas, there you are. I thought I saw you. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, you I was muted. If you want to read through the students, uh, you're welcome to do so. Okay, I skimmed through early and I didn't see any of my students, but if they logged on, I would like for you to introduce yourselves. As Matt stated earlier, all of our students are juniors, so therefore we do not have any graduates, but we've had graduates in the past uh, from this program. And I would just like to take this moment to um, acknowledge Matt Dolan. Thank you for all that you have done uh, in implementing this program, because had it not been for this grant, we would not have had an AP physics program at our school. That would not have been possible at all. So congratulations to all graduates. We wish you the best. Okay, well, well thank you very much, Ms. Lucas. Uh, the, the students at Kahoma, who I do just want to mention, uh, and, and I appreciate Ms. Lucas joining us, Kaylin Brooks, Arkenya Jones, Monica Simmons, Alasia Johnson, and Tyree Blackshire. So uh, thank you to them. So I think for, uh, we are now turning to Holmes High School. Now, Holmes has a, a, an important role in our program as well. Holmes is uh, the school that hosted U.S. Secretary of Education Betsy DeVos in October 
of last school year uh, in October 2018. They also hosted as part of that program students from all over the state. So we were very pleased to have them do so. Uh, I want to acknowledge uh, there's been many people there who have really been essential to our program. I want to acknowledge Dr. Henderson, who is the superintendent. Uh, and I want to point out specifically uh, Mr. Azim, who has been key to our program throughout all of this. Uh, he has been with us for three years now, and he has double duty. There's a couple teachers like this. There are three teachers around the state who do this. Mr. Azim uh, does it where he is the teacher for both AP Physics 1 and AP Computer Science Principles. So we, we really want to thank uh, Mr. Azim. On a more personal note, uh, uh, as I believe Kieran mentioned, my son Brian, who is a senior physics major at Yale, has been the tutor at Holmes Central High School for the last three years. So I certainly want to acknowledge the, the work that, uh, that Brian has done there as well. So uh, I believe, uh, uh, Dr. Wiggum, you are going to identify the, the students uh, at Home Central, which happens to have more students in our program than, than any other high school. Homes is uh, uh, sort of on the, the, the periphery of the Delta, north of Jackson, about 70 miles. Just for those of you who like Professor Weiss, likes to sort of visualize how things fit together. So Dr. Wiggum, I, I know you were on earlier. If you're still on, please, please go ahead. Good morning. Yes, um, just as um, Dr. Lucas um, mentioned, we'd like to thank Mr. Dolan for his exemplary leadership with the Global Teaching Project. Um, I had an opportunity to spend some time with them on one of the um, uh, activities that they um, had organized for our students, and it was in Jackson at Millsaps and Jackson State, and we toured the museum. So um, just the amazing work that you're doing with this project for rural areas. Um, I majored in biology and chemistry, and I, I just couldn't imagine had I had this type of project or platform in my life, what I possibly could have been. I could have been another uh, Dr. Weiss. <laughs> but much gratitude and appreciation to Mr. Azim. Uh, Mr. Azim is our uh, AP physics instructor, and his dedication to teaching and learning, I mean, it's just unmatched and it's invaluable. And he's by way of India. Uh, his home country is India. So we do appreciate um, the global teaching um, here in our little small rural town. So without further ado, would like to uh, wish, wish all graduates, but the Holmes County Central High School graduating seniors, uh, Alexandra Hillard, uh, she's an AP physics student. Uh, she resides in Oconee, Mississippi, and I want you to know the little small area that this project had reached out to is very important. These are real rural areas that most people have never heard of. Uh, she has a GPA of 3.9, and she plans to attend Holmes Community College. We have Temperance Mines. Uh, she takes AP Physics. She's from Lexington, Mississippi. Uh, she has a GPA of 3.7. Uh, her college plans are Mississippi Valley State University. Her parent is Terrell Mines, and Adriana's parents were Adrian Neal and Donald Hillard. Brandy Gordon is an AP Physics student from Durant, Mississippi. Her parent is Santara Willingham, and she has a GPA of 3.5 and plans to attend the University of Southern Mississippi. We have Justin Smith, who's a well sought out running back, but who's also in AP Physics. So we're so proud of Justin. Justin also serves as a uh, student on our school board for um, input. So we're very proud of all the things that he's doing. Uh, his course was AP Physics this year. He's from Durant, Mississippi um, as well. His mother is um, uh, Dewana Smith. He has a GPA of 3.5 and plans to attend the University of Southern Mississippi. We have Jalen Robinson. He's in AP Physics. He resides in Lexington, Mississippi. His parents are Mil Milton Hardrick and Framika Robinson. He has a GPA of 3.4 and he plans to attend Mississippi State University. We have Lathel Bankhead who resides in Kruger, Mississippi. His parents are Shayla Johnson and he has a GPA of 3.7. He plans to attend Holmes Community College. 
Now, the last three students that I will present to you, they are AP computer science students. He, uh, Isaac Randall, he resides in Lexington, Mississippi. His parents are Isaac and Matilda Randall. He has a GPA of 4.1. He plans to attend the University of Mississippi. We have Jakeva Young Dixon, who resides in Lexington, Mississippi. His parent is Susie Creighton. He has a GPA of 3.0, and he plans to attend Holmes Community College. And our, fat, our last honoree is Ivory Dorsey. She resides in Lexington, Mississippi. Her parents are Kanisha Smith and Ivory Dorsey. Um, her GPA is 3.4, and she plans to attend Mississippi State University. Holmes County Central High School, on behalf of our administrators and our district leaders, we're so very proud of all of our students. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wiggum. Uh, the next school is Houston. We, we actually have a Houston and Philadelphia, probably not the Houston and Philadelphia uh, that first come to mind when people hear those towns, but they are nonetheless very important to us. The teacher at Philadelphia uh, is uh, uh, Mrs. Creekmore, who we heard from a moment ago. I also wanna thank Principal Ellison, and uh, I also wanna thank our tutor at, at uh, at Houston, who has been a key tutor for us the last few years, Dom Panisi. But uh, Mrs. Creekmore, if you could please introduce uh, your students, please. First, we have Abby Kate Boyer. She plans to attend Ole Miss and study secondary education English. Emma Brassfield is going to Mississippi College to major in biology and medical sciences with a minor in French. Keyshawn Bonham is, will attend Edwamba Community College where he plans to major in videography. Cameron Cooper will attend the University of Southern Mississippi and major in nursing. Jeremiah Davenport will go to Itawamba Community College and major in nursing. Alex Ivey plans to attend Itawamba Community College to study engineering. Janala Jones plans to attend Northeast Community College to major in physical therapy. John Reed Lancaster plans to attend Itawamba Community College and is undecided on a major. Haley Makemson plans to attend Itawamba Community College where she will major in interior design and she is planning on being part of the um, color guard. Micaiah McCoy will go to Jackson State and major in biology. Connor Moore will attend Mississippi State University and major in physics. Emily Pettit will also go to Mississippi State University where she will major in accounting and she plans to be part of the famous maroon band color guard. Tremon Robinson will attend Edwamba Community College where he will plan to major in engineering. Jasmine Rogers will go to Holmes Community College and major in dental hygiene where she will also play softball. Bo Springer is attending Edwamba Community College where he plans to major in secondary education or physical therapy. And Monty Swing will um, go to Edwamba Community College and major in secondary education. These are all of our seniors where we, um, in our AP Physics class, we also have two juniors that are in AP Physics, which are Jaden Johns and Jacob McCann. Thank you, Mrs. Creekmore. Uh, our next school is a school that is new to us this year, Humphreys, which is also in the Delta. Uh, we are fortunate in that we do have some history with Humphreys because uh, Dr. Angel Meeks, who was superintendent at Holmes uh, in, in Holmes County when we first started. She subsequently moved to Humphreys and, and Ms., uh, uh, Dr. Meeks has been very helpful to us in, in setting up the program there. Uh, we are grateful there as we are to uh, in, at many of our schools to the administration, uh, Principal Hodo, uh, Mr. Moore uh, for their help in what they have done and we also are grateful to uh, our tutor, Sean Hackett, who has been very helpful to us throughout. Uh, and Sean, like uh, Sam Weiss, like uh, my son Brian, is a, a senior physics major at Yale. I believe we have on the line Ms. McKenzie. Now their program, uh, and this is a wonderful thing if we can make it work, their program actually is uh, entirely juniors this year, but we still want to recognize those students. So Ms. McKenzie, if you are on, please, if you could uh, introduce your students. Good morning. Good morning. On behalf of CEO Matt Dolan and other sponsors of the Global Teaching Project, we are 
truly grateful to be a part of this program under the leadership of Xavier Hodo, Principal, Assistant Principal Robert Moore from Humphrey County High School. We have a total of 10 students. We have nine juniors and one sophomore. And the juniors are as follows. Here is Bolton, Eric Bradfield, Terrence Brown, Zandra Frizel, Latasia Horton, Alexandra Jones, Courtney Little, Jakara Waller, Jamal York, and we have one sophomore, Janaya Lee, and that is a total of 10, and thank you. Thank you, Ms. McKenzie. Uh, we, we appreciate that. Our next school is uh, Lake High School, which is in, uh, uh, I'm sorry, which is in Scott County, uh, which is in the central part of the state. We are fortunate in that we have three high schools from Lake, uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, from, from Scott County. Uh, and we have Lake, Scott Central, and Morton. We'll get to Scott Central and, and Morton in a moment. Uh, Scott Central also has a unique role in our program. Uh, Dr. McGee, who is the superintendent of uh, Scott County School District, is effectively our CEO. Uh, he has done extraordinary work. I want to, to acknowledge his important role. Uh, and Scott County basically does a lot to administer our accounts, uh, handles a lot of the administrative tasks without which we couldn't operate. So we are very grateful to Scott County, to Dr. McGee, to Mr. Ladner, uh, Ms. Hollingsworth, uh, 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 Mrs. Martin, all in the, the uh, uh, bookkeeping uh, accounting office. Uh, at Lake, uh, we are very grateful to Principal Gilstrap for his role in leading this effort. And we have two classes there. We have uh, an AP Physics class and an AP Computer Science class. The AP Physics class is led by uh, Ms. Anderson. The AP Computer Science is led by Mr. Davis. Uh, Ms. Anderson, I know, was on earlier. Uh, I'm not sure if she is still on. Ms. Anderson, are you? Okay, if you could please uh, identify your students. Okay. Uh, in our AP Computer Science class, we just have one senior this year, uh, Madison Clark, and she will be attending EC, East Central Community College in the fall, and she's going to be pursuing her associate's degree in liberal arts with concentration in computer science. And after she finishes EC, she plans to attend either Mississippi State or Southern Miss to finish her bachelor's in computer science. And then we have four seniors in our physics class. Uh, Abby Pham, she wasn't able to join us for the meeting, but <clears throat> we have Elena Edmonds. Elena it will attend East Central, and she's going to be playing softball for East Central as well. When she finishes there, she will attend Ole Miss and earn her degree in speech and language pathology. We have Will Jeter. Uh, will is also our student body president, and he will also attend East Central and major in pre-med. And after he graduates from EC, he plans to attend Ole Miss to further his medical education and also minor in banking and finance. And after he graduates Ole Miss, then he'll attend Life University uh, chiropractic school. And our last student is Katie Hillman. Katie will be attending Heinz Community College where she will major in radiology. And Katie is also our star student this year. Well, thank you, Ms. Anderson. Uh, uh, we're very proud of the work being done there at Lake and, and are grateful for all you do. Our next school is North Pontotoc. We, we serve both North Pontotoc and South Pontotoc because Pontotoc's a, a big place, so it needs to, to have a couple high schools. Uh, so at North Pontotoc, we uh, have, uh, our, our teacher is Kelly Matthews. Uh, we also wanna thank uh, Dr. Puckett, who is the superintendent uh, of, of the, the school district who's been very helpful to us. Uh, and also uh, the uh, principals at North and South Pontotoc High Schools. Ms. Matthews and also her colleague Ms. Schaefer at South Pontotoc have been particularly helpful in many of our programs. They have taken a lead role 
in, in a lot of our university-based residential programs. Uh, they're both extraordinary teachers and we're very grateful to, to both of them. Uh, and Ms. Matthews, if you are there, if you could please uh, mention your, your, uh, your students, please. I have two seniors this year, Colin Crossan, uh, will attend the University of Mississippi and major in biology as a pre-med focus. Jacob Anderson is pursuing um, joining the Marines this summer and after that would like to work with aeronautical engineering at a school that he will decide later. My seniors from last year were Wes Sutton who is going to go to Mississippi State to major in agriculture architectural engineering, Josh Gordon, who's going to ICC and then Delta State for audio engineering, and Carlton Wallace, who's going to Mississippi State to pursue a degree in architecture. So I'm very proud of these students and I'm very thankful for all that the Global Teaching Project has provided for them. Well, well thank you, Ms. Matthews. I, I also, you know, just trying to, to uh, keep the plate spinning here, I, I have not always been uh, getting it exactly right. I want to, I Wanted to come back to Morton High School uh, because I, I uh, sort of got things out of order alphabetically. I also want to acknowledge as we go through all our tutors because our tutors, as, as Kieran said at the beginning, really are a key part of this. And I just want to mention them as each part of the, the, the team. At Lake High School, we heard from Sam uh, Weiss, who is our tutor at Lake High School. He is one of our longest tenure tutors, as I say. He's been working at Lake for three years, and we're just extraordinarily grateful to, to Sam. Stephanie Bang, who is a computer science major at Yale, has joined us more recently. She is working at Lake. We're delighted to have her there as well. Uh, at Morton, our tutor is Eric Rohr, uh, who's a student at University of Virginia. He uh, weighed in on the discussion with Dr. Weiss. He has come down to Mississippi, as, as many of our, our uh, tutors have. And I'm trying to see uh, at, at Lake, as, as I say, which is in, or I'm sorry, at Morton, which is like Lake in Scott County. Uh, uh, we're grateful to Principal Nobles there. Now, uh, Ms. Harrell, I don't know if Ms. Harrell is on. Uh, Ms. Harrell, are you on? Now that's fine, uh, and she has a very valid excuse. Uh, Ms. Harrell, I know, was on her way to a, a doctor's appointment for a very happy reason. She is uh, scheduled to, to uh, have a, a baby soon, uh, and my guess is our program is run a little bit late, so she is in at her doctor's appointment, uh, and obviously that is a priority. I know Ms. Harrell had indicated that if at all possible she was gonna join us uh, but my guess is she had to get off. I do want to, to identify the students at Morton uh, and to whom we're, we're very grateful. Uh, Haley Harrington is a senior. Uh, Rachel Jennings also is a senior. And Eli Wilkerson is a junior. And uh, they all, uh, we want to make sure we acknowledge them. So to, to get back on track, uh, I want to turn to Northeast Lauderdale. Uh, where Ms. Maloney has uh, been leading the class and uh, Justin Helfgott has been the tutor. So uh, Ms. Maloney, if you could please read, read your students. Okay, I have nine seniors this year. Um, I don't have mine in alphabetical order, but um, Kylie LaBelle um, has been our star student at Northeast this year and she'll be attending Mississippi State University and majoring in wildlife, fisheries, um, and agriculture. Um, Danielle Connor um, has been selected as our valedictorian. Um, he'll be attending the University of Mississippi as a student member of the Sally McDonald Barksdale Honors College and the Trent Lott Leadership Institute. And he'll be majoring in public policy leadership on the pre-medicine track with plans to become a physician or to work in Congress as a U.S. foreign policy analyst. Um, Jaden Dominey is our next senior. Uh, Jaden will be attending the University of Southern Mississippi and majoring in business. Caroline is our next uh, senior. Caroline is our salutatorian this year, and she will be attending Mississippi State University as a student member of the Judy and Bobby, Bobby Shalock's Honors, Honors College and majoring in biomedical engineering with a focus in pre-medicine. She plans to attend medical school and to become an oncologist. Jamie Randall is our next senior. Um, she'll be attending the University of Mississippi and majoring in physics. Um, she'll be a member of the Old Miss Pride and Pride of the South Band and um, Naval ROTC. 
She plans to become a pilot or a nuclear physicist for the U.S. Navy. Next is uh, Landry Jones. Landry will be attending Meridian Community College for her first two years and then transfer to a university in hopes of becoming an occupational therapist. Uh, Molly Moore. Molly will be attending East Central Community College to play softball and soccer, and she plans to become a physical therapist. Stacy Johnson. Stacy will be attending Mississippi State University and majoring in computer engineering. She plans to work for Raytheon or Google upon receiving her degree. And then our last one is Dimitri Roberts. He plans on going to EMCC, and he's undecided what he wants to major in. Um, I would like to say thank you to all my students for working so hard this year, and all of them have kept their GPAs up. Um, and they're all graduating honors or high honors this year. Well, thank you very much, Ms. Maloney. Uh, I want to turn now to uh, Northside, which is in uh, Shelby, Mississippi. It's a little bit north of uh, Cleveland. Uh, and uh, Northside is new to our program this year. We're very pleased to have them. I want to thank uh, Superintendent Smith there, Principal Hardrick, uh, Mr. Robinson, and Ms. Jones for all they have done at, at Northside. Uh, we also are pleased to welcome uh, uh, earlier this year, Mr. Towers as our AP physics teacher there. Uh, Mr. Towers, if, if you're on, uh, now Northside again is one of our schools and this is a wonderful position to be in that is almost entirely juniors. Uh, there is one senior we wanna recognize. We also wanna mention the other students but uh, Mr. Towers, if you're on, if you could please uh, uh, talk about your students. All right. Good morning. I want to uh, say good morning to the sponsor of the Global Teaching Project, Matt. And we're up under the tutelage of Principal Hardrick. We have one senior, Deja Franklin. She'll be majoring in marine biology, and she wants to attend Northwest Community College. We have eight juniors, uh, Algernon Cooper. LaDatron Bolden, Azalea Townsend, Dundrika Williams, Nikhil Milton, Jessica Kelly, Tyrus Wright, and Starika Wright. We had a wonderful time this year at AP Fizz, and we want to thank the Global Teaching Project. Thank you again, Matt, and congratulations well, to Deja. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Towers. Uh, uh, I also want to uh, thank uh, uh, Emma Yates, who has tutored at Northside, and also Nick Anderson, who is both, has tutored at Northside as well. Uh, our next school is Palmer High School, which is in Marks, Mississippi, which is a, a, a town with particular historic significance. Uh, it is for, now as a history major, this is the type of thing I identify with, perhaps more than the physics, is the Marks Mule Train which was a, a very significant civil rights march that took place in 1968. It originated from Marks, Mississippi, went all the way up to Washington, DC. Uh, and it's, it provides some fascinating uh, context for uh, our work there and uh, is a very conspicuous presence in the town to this day. We have two classes at Marks, uh, in Marks at Palmer High School an AP physics class and an AP computer science class. The AP physics class is uh, entirely seniors, the AP computer science class entirely juniors. Uh, I was pleased to host many of the seniors or help host many of the seniors here in Washington where they visited in uh, December. Uh, and it's a really a great group and we are proud to, to uh, acknowledge them and the work they have done. There are four seniors at Palmer. Uh, Deontay Adams uh, will be attending Mississippi State University. Uh, uh, Maya Davis will be attending uh, Northwest uh, Community College. Uh, Kira Clark will be attending Northwest Community College and Dasha Harris will be attending Northwest as well. So we're all very proud of the work they've done. They're, they're wonderful young people and uh, are very grateful they've been part of our program. Uh, the computer science students are juniors. Uh, they're a, a remarkably capable group. Uh, we, we hope to have them again in our program next year, perhaps for physics. I at least want to uh, acknowledge them. Shaka Piorana Holt. Uh, 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 
Darius Huddleston, Quinn Davidson Jones, and uh, Nia Nia Doro. So thank you for for all the work you have done. Uh, we're also grateful for our tutors uh, there. Uh, Nick Anderson also tutors uh, at Palmer, and we also wanted to single out uh, the teachers and and thank them and the administrators because they've really been remarkably supportive. The the leader of the district is Dr. Evelyn Jassel, who uh, again has been with us for three years. We're very grateful to her. Uh, Dr. Shigog uh, has really been a key asset in, in coordinating many things at the school. Principal Atkins, uh, we are grateful to, to him for his help. And also uh, 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 Ms. Wright uh, for, for her work with the uh, with the uh, physics class. Uh, so we, we are all very grateful uh, to them uh, for all the work that they have been doing. So- uh, Let me turn it over to the next school. I just also wanted to acknowledge um, our tutor for computer science for Palmer, which is, uh, he's a new tutor, uh, re recently joined our program, Cameron Davis from the University of Virginia. And also wanted to acknowledge, um, in case he may be on, is Andrew Sparkman, who is a, a Yale graduate, but who also worked uh, with Palmer and a number of our other schools uh, earlier in the year, Andrew Sparkman. So. Thank, you. Thank you, Kieran. Also, of course, I wanna mention the computer science teacher at Palmer, who's done a terrific job uh, in a program we just started there this year. Uh, Mr. Mr. Baxter Swearingen. So he's uh, certainly, thanks very much to Mr. Swearingen and Ms. Wright for uh, being the lead teachers in those programs. Uh, the next school, and we are uh, uh, getting, approaching the end. We know other folks have things to do, uh, but we want to, we, we do want to acknowledge what everyone has been doing. Uh, Philadelphia High School. So I understand that uh, Dr. Wilcox will be doing the introductions there, but we do, again, as we do elsewhere, we want to acknowledge all the help uh, and, and the, the remarkable uh, service, uh, starting with Dr. Hall. Uh, she is somebody who, we had a little bit of an unusual uh, introduction to, to Philadelphia, uh, and Dr. Hall reached out to us. I'm delighted she did so. They are now in our second year. Uh, with our program. Also, Mr. Wallace uh, and, and Mr. Eland, we're very grateful to them. Uh, so we, we, uh, I've been to, to Philadelphia a number of times. It's, it's, a, it's a lovely place, and we're grateful to Dr. Hall and others for that. We are the two teachers there. Uh, we are grateful to uh, Ms. Creel, who teaches physics, and uh, Ms. Cumberland, who teaches AP Computer Science. Again, sort of a typical blend. The, the AP Computer Science is juniors, largely, uh, while the AP Physics class is seniors. But my understanding is that uh, we're going to have Dr. Wilcox do the, the introduction. Uh, Dr. Wilcox, are you on the line? I am. Good. Thank you. Um, first, I want to say a great uh, big thank you to the Global Teaching Project. Uh, two reasons, really. You have worked very hard to facilitate conversations about our content that our students may not have opportunities to have in our local um, setting. And number two, you have made a very distance program feel very close to home, and you brought a lot of relevance to it. And that's very meaningful, especially in our current situation. So. So um, I, I want to say thank you very much and, and express um, how honored we are to be a part of the project. Um, also to Ms. Creel and to Ms. Cumberland, um, they are go-getters. They make it happen in spite of adversity or, um, and, and can overcome any, any barrier to, to uh, making it happen for our kids. And most of all, I want to acknowledge some students. Uh, I want to start out with our AP Physics seniors. Uh, Aaliyah Andrews is planning to attend East Central Community College. Well, she's major, uh, working in uh, cosmetology, psychology, and business administration. She's got a very big plate there. Um, we've got Malia Black, who will be um, attending East Central Community College to pursue a degree in nursing. Uh, Breon Jordan is planning to attend Itawamba Community College, where he'll play football and pursue a degree in engineering. Spicy Scales is attending also East Central Community College 
majoring in pre-vet and will transfer to Mississippi State to continue her studies in veterinary school. Ray Darius Triplett is uh, planning to attend Mississippi Delta Community College where he plays football and will major in public relations and marketing with a minor in communications. Shauna Tyser plans to attend East Central Community College and major in liberal arts. And then our three juniors who are taking our um, computer science course are Ayanna Coleman, Jayanna Coleman, and Shakira Dominique um, Collier. And we are very, um, very proud of our students who, who are working to expand beyond the services that we provide in, in Philadelphia and reaching out and engaging the world around them. And um, we want to acknowledge them. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Well, thank you very much. Uh, we, we have very much enjoyed working with, with you, Dr. Wilcox, and your colleagues uh, at Philadelphia. Our next school uh, is our third and final school from Scott County, uh, fittingly Scott Central. Ms. Martin and Ms. Shaw both take the lead on our two classes there. Our two classes, again, physics and computer science. Uh, we wanna thank also uh, uh, the principal, uh, Principal Wells. Uh, he's been very helpful to us. And uh, Ms. Shaw, uh, I think has a, a, a family uh, medical issue. We certainly hope that works out well, and she quite rightly is, is attending to that. Ms. Uh, Martin, if you are with us, if you could please uh, identify your students. Good morning. Um, first of all, we have Gianna Brickler. Gianna plans to attend um, East Central Community College and then Mississippi State University. She's undecided as to what she wants to major in, so she will major in liberal arts while at East Central. Next, we have in our physics class, Cassie Cook. Cassie will be attending basic training for the Army, and then following basic training, she will attend law school and double major in English. Also in physics, we have Austin Doty. Austin will attend East Central Community College and then transfer to Mississippi State University, and he will major in electrical engineering. We also have Courtney Derricks. He is in our AP Computer Science program and was also a member of our AP Physics program last year. Courtney plans to attend the University of Southern Mississippi and major in music education. Leah Riser is in our AP Computer Science program and she will attend Mississippi State University and major in animal and dairy sciences with a concentration in business and industry. Tammy Vo is also in our AP Computer Science program and was a former member of our AP Physics program last year. She plans to attend Mississippi State University and major in computer science. And then we also have two seniors who were not members of our AP program this year, but we wanted to recognize they were members of our physics program last year. We have Raylikia McDonald, who will attend Mississippi State University and will major in business and with a minor in math. And then Chase Robinson will also attend Mississippi State University and major in agriculture. We have several juniors who are members of our physics program this year that I wanted to recognize. Alexis Guthrie, Charismia Hardy, Christiana Leatherwood, Logan Payne, Tommy Pham, Brianna Sanford, Lacey Shaw, and Cheyenne Taylor. And then we also have one junior in our computer science program, Ronaldo Suarez. I would just like to congratulate all seniors, um, the class of 2020. Um, and thank you, Mr. Dolan and Ms. Uh, Karen for what you do for the students in Mississippi. Thank you very much, Ms. Martin. Uh, I do wanna also thank the uh, tutors at, at uh, Scott Central. As I say, tutors are really a central part of our program. Uh, Alex Lusak from Yale uh, and also Yara Youssef from uh, University of Virginia, who both uh, came down to Mississippi to work with our students in person. Alex also is a, a tutor at Philadelphia, so I want to acknowledge that, as well as Jake Goudeau, uh, who is the, the physics teacher at Philadelphia. So thank you for, for everyone's efforts. The final school. And Matt, one more shout out to Olivia Goodrich. Um, oh, thank you. Yep, at, at Scott Central. And I think uh, Yara will be up next uh, with South Pontotoc. Yes, and uh, Yara will be at South Pontotoc. Olivia, by the way, is among the people who have been helping with our daily physics sessions. She actually took the lead on Tuesday, so I certainly want to acknowledge Olivia. 
Uh, the final school of our 15 is South Pontotoc with Ms. Schaefer, uh, who, as I mentioned, uh, like Ms. Matthews, has really played an extraordinary role with our program. Uh, Ms. Schaefer, if, if, uh, and she, as, as Kieran mentions, Yara Youssef is the tutor there who did also come down to, to Mississippi in person. Uh, Ms. Schaefer, if you want to just uh, identify your students, please. Okay, I surely will. Uh, we have six seniors that uh, I want to recognize. Two of them are seniors this year. Perla Diaz plans to attend Itawamba Community College and then transfer to the university. And she'll be majoring in healthcare administration. Tanner Schampert plans to attend the University of Mississippi this fall. And he'll be majoring in pharmacy with a uh, specialization in nuclear pharmaceuticals. Okay, I've got four seniors that attended uh, AP Physics last semester as juniors. I have Alex Collins. He plans to attend Itawamba Community College and then transfer to the University of Mississippi. He'll be majoring in civil engineering. Nathaniel Hawkins. He plans to attend Etiwama Community College and then transfer to University of Mississippi or Mississippi State. At this point, he is an undecided major, but uh, he's a very great student, and I know that he'll be very successful in whatever he chooses to do. I have also uh, John Thomas Moreland. He plans to attend Etiwama Community College and then transfer to the University of Mississippi, and his major will also be pharmacy. And Last but not least, I have Lindsay Panel, who plans to attend Itawamba Community College and major in nursing. Um, I also want to recognize my juniors from this year. I have Riley Chisholm, Andrew Tudor, and Richard Tudor. Uh, these are all really great students. I've really enjoyed teaching them. I know they're all going to be successful, and they're not only just great students, but they're great people too. They're great and exceptional people, and they're going to be a an asset to their community wherever they decide to, to go in the future. I also want to thank our tutors. Uh, we had Emma Yates last year and then Yara Youssef this year. They were great, worked with us through some technological issues and just were really assets to our class. So thank you so much to the Global Teaching Project and all the things you're bringing to our schools. Okay. Well, thank you, Ms. Schaefer. Uh, now that concludes the main part of our program, but I, I want to just take a, a moment for concluding remarks. I see we, we are approaching the hour. We'll have everyone wrapped up by then. But what I wanna do is basically just thank the people who have been involved. And, and I wanna do that in part because, you know, we've heard from our teachers, we heard from Dr. Weiss uh, about things to be thinking about as a young person, thing to be, things to be thinking about as you're, you're trying to think ahead. And, and I wanted to thank people for, for really a couple reasons. First, uh, so that each of our students know that they are not laboring on their own. There are a lot of people who are very attentive to what they are doing and are trying to help them in what they're doing. So they should appreciate and draw strength from the broader network of people that have really been helping this program. Uh, the, the second thing is I, I want to acknowledge, you know, for the young people on this call, some of the people who have been involved with this, I actually went to grade school or high school or college with, which was a long time ago. So the people you are with now, just be mindful. These are people who, who are, are going to be parts of your lives going forward, and you should be very much attentive to that. Uh, and, and also, obviously, I just want to thank everyone for, for what they have done, because without their support, we, we never could have made this happen. So very briefly, I wanted to highlight a few folks. Obviously, there are folks, uh, perhaps I will not have the opportunity to mention by name, and I apologize for that, but a few I want to mention. Uh, uh, Todd Wagner, who is the first person I spoke to about this initiative and really was key to getting this started. Uh, Jim Johnson and then Charles Harrison in Mississippi uh, helped introduce us to the, the superintendents, helped us get a little bit of traction in the state. Uh, Governor Barber, the, the senators, Senator Wicker, uh, Senator Hyde-Smith, 
uh, were very helpful with this as well. Uh, Secretary DeVos uh, clearly was helpful and we were glad for her to come down. Uh, the people on our advisory board, uh, Meg Yuri probably mer mentions, well certainly merits special mention. Meg has been part of this since the inception. Uh, Meg is the director of the Yale Center for Astronomy and Astrophysics. Also Bobby Jones, who is the chairman of the University of Virginia Physics Department, has been a wonderful asset and largely through his efforts, we have had more tutors from the University of Virginia than any other school. Uh, uh, Jim Steiner, Eunice Kim, people I went to college with, uh, Michael Steele, I went to high school with, Bill Rays, I went to grade school with. So you sort of get the, the notion. Uh, I, I wanna thank uh, the people we've worked with at the universities. Uh, we work closely with the universities with our residential programs. Devin Brenner at Mississippi State, Dean David Rock of the University of Mississippi uh, School of Education, Bob Cummings at Old Miss as well. Uh, 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 at uh, Jackson State, Robbie Luckett has been very uh, helpful to us. At Millsaps, Fonda Devro has been very helpful to us. Uh, Dr. Gerald at Delta State was a wonderful host for our teacher training program in, uh, in uh, January. Uh, and uh, others who were helpful in those programs. Uh, Cameron Wilborn, who is a graduate of ours, was a wonderful tour guide for, for Jackson State. I do want to acknowledge the people who have, have uh, basically provided the resources for this, uh, because the fact is we can't do anything unless we have the resources to do it. Uh, the Jack Kent Cook Foundation was really the, the, the first entity that really committed to, to making this happen. Uh, uh, I want to thank particularly uh, Astrid Kenny there, uh, Rick Sean Sloan, Stacy DeBaldo have all been terrific. And the Walton Family Foundation, particularly Kim Davis. Kim has been our point person there. Uh, the Walton Family Foundation has been extremely supportive. We're, we're very grateful to them. And we're very grateful to Kim for the time and effort he has put in. Uh, Lex Lindsay with the Chisholm Foundation. Uh, Lex uh, is a, a physicist himself uh, who actually went to University of Virginia. Uh, although he is a native of Laurel, Mississippi, he has been terrific. Uh, uh, Lloyd Gray with the Phil Harden Foundation has been a great resource from, from day one of this. Uh, and also I want to acknowledge uh, Rose Flanoral of FedEx, uh, Don Barrett uh, of Don Barrett Barrett. I mean, Don has stepped up personally and he has really done extraordinary things for the state of Mississippi and particularly his home in, uh, in Holmes County. Uh, so with that, uh, I, I just want to acknowledge again, and I, I apologize, I'm sure I am missing some key people, but I, I want to thank everybody for what they have done, what they have made possible, and I want our students to know there are a lot of people behind you on this, so please, if you need help, let us know. We, we are very committed to seeing you succeed, and we're very proud of you, we're glad that you were able to join us today. We are very deeply appreciative to your superintendents, to your teachers, and to all the others who have helped make this possible. So uh, with that, I see you know, we are approaching the hour uh, and, and we wanna be respectful of everyone's time. Uh, but in closing, I would invite uh, Kieran, uh, uh, Mrs. Creekmore, Mr. Piegler, and again, I really wanted to highlight the role those two have played because they have been absolutely essential to that their, the program. Also, Lizzie, uh, uh, Lizzie uh, Braden Martin, I, or, or Martin Braden, I tend to mix those up, from Mississippi State, who runs our summer program, has done an extraordinary job. Uh, but Mrs. Creekmore, Mr. Piegler, who are uh, really leading this effort in many, many ways, uh, I want to invite you to, if you have anything to say, Kieran, uh, Mrs. Uh, Ms. Matthews, Ms. Schaefer, any of our other teachers uh, before we round, wind up. Folks, the only thing I wanted to add, just to echo some of Matt's statements, we are all so very proud of all of you seniors in particular out there. 
I know that this is not exactly the way that we, you know, had hoped to congratulate you. Um, we're all sort of learning as we go in this new world that we live in now. Um, you know, we would have much rather preferred to shake your hands and give you all hugs in person. And that's just, that's just not the way it is to be at the moment. But it doesn't mean that we are any less proud and we are any less appreciative of all the efforts that you're putting in. So. I hope that you feel all of the support. As Matt said, you have a lot of people rooting for you from all across the country. And I hope you, each and every one of you can feel that today, um, that you are not alone in this. You are not, you know, just on your own, sitting in, in, in your homes, um, wherever you are, you're not alone. And so please continue to work hard. Uh, the exams are a few weeks away and we know that you can all do it. Um, if you put your best foot forward. Um, so please feel the strength of all of us today um, on this call and, and go forward and, and, and take it. So that's, that's all I wanted to, to leave you all with. Okay, thank you, Karen. Anybody else? Well, thank you. As, as you guys know, we will be in touch. Uh, thank you, Karen. Thank you, obviously, Dr. Weiss. Thank you, Sam. Uh, I, I think I need to go on record for thanking my family as well. Uh, my wife, Mary Ellen, and my son, Patrick, who is now at NIH, trying to help out my daughter, Alyssa, who came down to Mississippi to help us in person. Our daughter, Nora, who is a teacher herself uh, for Teach for America. Our son, Brian, who is a tutor. Uh, I, I Forgive me, I'm just exercising some prerogative to get those names in. Thank you, everyone. Uh, please hang in there, and we hope to see the physics students, computer science students uh, obviously are, are working uh, on a different track, but we hope to see all of our physics students tomorrow at 9 a.m. So with that, uh, thanks everybody, have a wonderful day, and uh, let's uh, finish strong this year. Take care. <laughs>